Praise the Lord. You know, the young will grow. And the son, the daughter, will grow beyond the father in Jesus' name. All those things you have heard will be multiplied in your life. Reproduced in your life. Now tonight, look at this. We started with I. Second day, M. The third day, P. And the fourth day, and then tonight, we're coming to C. Everybody shout C. I said shout C. You know, there is one word that's very important as we move on, as we move up, as we achieve, and as we try to arrive, is the word go. You see, a lot of things happen that people don't know how to cope. When they don't cope, they cop out. To cop out means just give up, die, don't move again. That thing has happened, you cannot cope, you cop out. And tonight, I will show you how to cope in every situation. They're going this way and going that way and it appears that all your neighbors, all your classmates, all your mates, other people, they cop out, they cop out, they cop out. I cannot find them again. I'm going to keep you standing. Standing firm. You will go. I will go. Whatever happens, I will go. Wherever I am, I will go. As I am climbing up, as I am climbing up, and something crosses my way, I will go. Are you there? Where are you? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, you have touched our lives already. The Holy Ghost are taking over. And we're face to face with the Almighty. I pray, Lord, anything that needs to be done, everything that needs to be done, do it in every life that everyone will cope in every situation in Jesus' name. Let your power come upon everyone. And I pray everything you have ordained, everything you have planned, everything you have promised, everything you have prophesied, that each one will be, will be there. Yeah. Will get there. Yeah. Will do it. Yeah. And great will be your manifestation yeah. and your presence in every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. That's an amen in your life. Yeah. Angels say amen on your behalf. Yeah. And the promises of God will be yes and amen in every life in Christ in Jesus' name. Yeah. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to a story, starting with a story of the people that God raised up and he wanted the least of them Boys, girls, men, women, to have an impact. Impact in the home, impact in the community, impact in their nation, impact in all the nations of the world. That nation is Israel. Already the arch and I. Already the arch and M. Already the arch a P. Already the arch and A. And now it came to see. I'm talking about the children of Israel. I, God, interrupted them with a miracle of deliverance. I, they were interrupted in many years of slavery. They have been slaves for centuries. And all of a sudden, God interrupted the life of Moses. 
And then he gave him the power, he gave him the mission to go to the children of Israel and interrupt them with the message of deliverance. And to go to Egypt and interrupt Pharaoh in all that Pharaoh was doing. I am. He moved them out. Out of mediocrity, he moved them. He was moving them to the land of promise where they will have mastery of everything, everyone, every situation. And then, P, he gave a purpose driven life. Purpose. And he said, You'll bring them out. Why? They will worship in this mountain. And after that, I've prepared a lunch for them. And the purpose is take them out of the place of slavery, uh, slavery and take them to the place where the lunch will bring forth plentifully. And then we have a, the action and the attitude. Moses first of all said, how can I do that? I am a stammerer. I've never been a good speaker, and there's nothing I can do. And then the Lord said, what's that in your hand? He said, it's a rock. Throw it down. It became a serpent. Pick it up, and it became whole again. He said, with that, you will go to Pharaoh, and you will do, you will act out everything I tell you to act out. His attitude changed. He appreciated the Lord. Thank you, Lord. He appreciated the Lord. You and I together, we can make it. He appreciated the Lord. And he knew that he was going to get there. And then he got to Egypt. And then the first action. You know, if you're going to make it in life, and thank God you'll make it in life. Action. Throw the rod down. That's action. Pick it up again. That's action. Eventually they came out. They were at the Red Sea. And they prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. You understand? Prayer without action will not get any result. You understand? Uh, you know, coaching the promises and fasting without action will not uh, make anything to move. And the Lord said, what's that in your hand? Why are you crying unto me? You have prayed enough. Act now. Act now. Take that road. Stretch it to the river. It is action. And then the river parted. They go to the other side. How did they get to the other side? The way had parted. And the river had parted. And the children of Israel were still standing there. Tell them. You told them to stand still. There is no action in standing still. They're going to get to the place. They ought to get to by taking action tell them to move forward and they move forward they took action they go to the other side and then god said take another action close that river he stretched the road and everything closer and you know everywhere they went and as they moved on to the promised land action there was rock there was no water what are we going to drink action take that rod and smite that rock action and water came out now we come to see and the determining factor in the lives of the children of israel after i after m after p after a is the c will they cope the saints spies to the land of promise go and look for the fruit Look at how the way is and what is there. And they came back. Only two people could cope, Joshua and Caleb. And the rest ten copped out. And because of the copping out, that's why all the I-M-P-A became wasted. And they couldn't go beyond the land, beyond the wilderness. Only the people that cope. And that's why I rejoice with you. You will cope. Yeah. I will cope. Look at Numbers chapter 13, verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled. A very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak 
there, understand? It is not what you see that stops you. It's what you think that you see stops you. It's not what you see, it's your imagination. It's your thinking. It's who you think, I cannot. That's your confession. You have what you say. We cannot. That's your confession. You have what you say. They said, moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Look at verse 30. It says in verse 30, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once. Action, action. Let us go up at once. All the miracles will mean nothing if we don't go up. Let us go up at once. All the prophecies on your life, all the promises the Lord has made will amount to nothing if you don't take action. Let us go up at once. The presence of Moses, the power in the rod, and the power in the name will mean nothing if you don't take action. Let us go up at once. At once. There are times when this is the time to take action. This is the time to rise up. This is the time to move on. If you miss that time, you might wait another year. Who knows? Another decade. Who knows? Another 40 years for the children of Israel. Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. We can go. I said we can go. And then look at verse 31. Those who cop out, those who just gave up, but the men that went up with him said, We'll be not able. How do you know? We'll be not able. You see somebody running, and because you've not trained yourself, and because you've not put yourself in the mode of the people that run. You've not thought of your legs, and they thought of their legs, and they used their legs, and they trained themselves. We'll be not able. How do you know? You see somebody solving a great problem, mathematical problem, and you say, I cannot. How do you know? You see somebody performing an operation, and they say that operation, it had never been performed before, and you're still a medical student. You say, I cannot. How do you know? You read a very good book, and that good book is selling and it's having uh, millions of copies selling and it says the best seller by the people that look at books that are written you say i cannot write a book how do you know and then you see somebody who has the same goal you have and he has achieved in such a time you say i cannot how do you know these people said we be not able their language limited them. Their thoughts limited them. Their mindset limited them. The impossibility in their brain, imagination. What they thought that limited them will be not able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. How did they know? Did they conduct any medical report for those people? Look. There are some trees that appear big and strong, but they are hollow on the inside. And they are not as strong as that other tree. You look at a person, and this, uh, you know, sometimes a man is a bully, or a fellow is a bully, is actually empty inside. It's a timid on the, it's timid on the inside, but they can shout. And then you say that to put up everyone, and you think they are stronger than you are. God has given you all the strength you need to live the life he called you to live. I can do what he says I can do. I said I can do what he says I can do. I don't compare myself to the other person, to that other person. He called me for this. He called him for that. He called him for that. And then as I look at myself, if Moses was able to do what he called him to do, I can do what God has called me to do. I. I. I can do what he has called me to do. I imagine Peter 
looking at Jesus Christ, and then with a word, he heals the sick. And I imagine Peter saying, that's Christ. I cannot do that. I imagine Peter following Christ to the place where uh, that daughter of Jairus had died. And then with one word, Jesus raised up Jairus. I imagine Peter saying, Christ is marvelous. I cannot do that. Peter, how do you know? And then I see Peter in chapter 5 of Acts. And then as he was walking, a shadow was healing the sick. Don't say you cannot. When your time comes, you will. Yeah. I see Peter in the house where the late dockers, and like Jesus raised the dead, he said, you know, he spoke to her, and she came back to life. Don't say you cannot. Maybe yesterday you could not. Maybe this moment you cannot. But tomorrow, when your time comes, you will. Yeah. I can. I, I, will. I will. I must. I must. They said they could not, and then in verse 32, in verse 32 it says, and they brought up an evil report of the land. What's an evil report? Somebody says when you tell a lie about another person, about a project, about something uh, that should be done, you discourage people, that's bad, that's evil report. Uh, well, that's, that's right. But when God expects that with everything he has put in you, that you can, and you can rise up, and you can achieve, uh, and you can do this, and you say you cannot, you cannot do what God says you can do. What God has prepared you for that you can do. What God pre prepared Moses for to go and tell you. This is what you do. And then you say you cannot. That's an evil report. When you tell lies on yourself. When you depreciate yourself, when you belittle yourself, when you cop out and you say, that's not meant for me, that's the evil report there of the land, which they search unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone uh, to search uh, it is the land that eateth up the inhabitants of the land. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Men of great stature. I can say a lot about that, but I don't have time. You know, we always think the other person is great, but I'm little. We always think uh, the other person we see there he is the one, he is the big man, he is the great man, he is the uh, accomplisher, but I cannot. We always lift up other people above who they are, and then we put down ourselves beyond measure. Come up. That's not uh, humility. That one is just an evil report about what God has said about you. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. That's exaggeration. There are people that exaggerate and they want to cop out. They want to excuse themselves. They don't want to do something uh, and they want to remain mediocre. They want to remain idlers and they say, after all, in our own sight, we are grasshoppers. I am not a grasshopper. I'm a creature of God. I'm a father of Christ. I'm a conqueror. I'm a victor. I see that some people don't know how to say. They don't like to say that about themselves. They say, Pastor, leave me where I am. I'm a grasshopper. Well, thank God, I'm not a grasshopper. Any grasshopper in the house today? Any giant in the house today? The Lord will make more than a giant, more than a conqueror in you in Jesus' name. They said so. We were in their side. Now, tell me, did you interview those people 
tell me about what you say about me. No, they didn't. They just assumed. It's imagination. Imaginations kill a lot of people. And they said, we are grasshoppers in our own sight. They are giants in our own sight. Even in their sight, we ourselves will look like grasshoppers. I want to talk to you tonight. When I say I'm talking to you, I pick you up as an individual. I'm not talking to a crowd. I'm talking to you. And this word will have impact in your soul, in your spirit, in Jesus' name. The topic tonight for C, coping, not coping out for credible contribution. The reason why the Lord has made you is that you contribute creditably to the world in which you live. And if you're going to do that, you must cope. You must cope. You must cope with everything that comes along, coping, not coping out for credible contribution. Number one, uh, we're dividing the message three parts. Number one, the courage to cope at the crossroads. The children of Israel were at the crossroads. The courage to cope at the crossroads. Number two, the consequence of coping out, dropping out, with cowards cowards drop out and the people that you know they don't know how to stay there stay still stand still let the wind pass let the storm pass let the way clear and then you can move on because of the temporary things they see they cop out they check out and they crawl out the consequence of copping out with cowards. Number three, our connection for the conqueror for a new creation. Our connection. Our connection. All we need to do is plug that thing into the socket and your light will brighten out. I said your light will brighten out. And you know what I discover? Connection. Let's say, for example, there's darkness. And then you pick up that thing uh, and you put it in the socket. Doesn't matter you're six years of age. Doesn't matter you're 60. Doesn't matter you're 80. Doesn't matter you're 90. It's the connection. It's not your age. It's not your DNA. It's not your IQ. It's not your EQ, emotional quotient. It's not, uh, you know, your background. It's not your parents. It's not the genes. And it is not your country or whatever it is the connection and once we make the connection tonight you'll be a new creature Amen. all things will be possible in your life i said all things will be possible in your life Amen. number one the courage to cope at the crossroads the courage to cope at the crossroads we're looking at joshua chapter one verse five Take this, Joshua is gone. You are the man of the hour. You are the woman of the hour. You are the boy, the girl of the hour. What he told Joshua, the Lord is telling you, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Yeah. You know, people don't understand that. God was telling Joshua, I've given you an assignment. In the continuation of the assignment of Moses. Now you are the man of the hour. Look at all these, all these millions of Israelites. You are the one that will lead them into the promised land. And the moment you stand, you stay in that assignment I give you. No man of Canaan shall be able to stand before you. God didn't mean if you go back to Egypt, you don't have any business there. You don't have any ministry there. You don't have any assignment there. If you go back to the place you don't have assignment, Pharaoh will stand and crush you. But as long as you stay in the calling I'm giving you, as long as you stay in the forward movement, of going to capture the promised land, there shall be no man able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so 
I will be with thee. Now understand, this is the almighty God talking. As I was with Moses every time, even when Moses faced what he thought he could not face, as I was with him, so I will be with you. I will not fail you. What if I get to a situation, I need resources, and the resources are not there? Uh-uh. It will never happen. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. When those feelings things are before you, I will not forsake you. When the powers that be, when they gather all their efforts and they get after you, I will not forsake you. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. I have talent to act in drama, but I don't have courage. You'll never be a dramatist. I have brain to be a scholar, but I don't have courage to pursue. You'll never be a scholar. I have what it takes to be a professional, but I look all around. I don't have the courage to join the team and then do what I need to do. Without courage, whatever brain power you have, whatever background you have, and whatever inspiration you have, and whatever books you have read, and whatever training you go through, and whatever encouragement you have, and how many days of praying and fasting you go through without courage, everything will make you remain at the zero level. Be strong and of a good courage for unto these people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. God said, I'm the one on the line. My name is on the line. My integrity is on the line. I already swore unto your fathers to give you the land. Therefore, I'm the one that made the promise. I'm the one that will see you through. There is nothing to be afraid of. He will do it in Jesus' name. Look at the beginning of that verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, Only be thou strong and very courageous. You see that? It's saying, with all the gettings you get, with all the gains you have made, and with all the good, good things you possess, courage is very important. You have to be courageous that God is calling me to a higher level. I see somebody there, the Lord is calling you to a higher level. No panic, no fear, no negative imagination, no negative confession, no going back to my background, and no going back to do I have resources or not. Be only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not to the right, not to the left. It says that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Where's the prospered man there? The prospered woman there. You will prosper. Amen. I said you will prosper. Amen. Who said that? God said that. That you will prosper. I wake up in the morning and I'm filled with joy. And when it appears I don't have the physical resources, natural resources, I'm confessing I will prosper. I'm going for an interview and then I remember the word of God and I tell myself I will prosper. I stand or sit before those interviewers and as I look at them, some of them smile, some of them frown, some of them, you know, they act as if, who do you think you are to get a great job like this? And I whisper to myself, I will prosper. I finish that interview and I say goodbye like somebody is a successful person. Not like I'm at your mercy. Will I get it? Will I not get it? I smile because there's something that tells me on the inside that I will prosper. I see the mail coming in. I've not even opened the mail and then I say thank the Lord the mail has come and I 
will prosper. They tell me to resume and to go and do this medical test and all that before I come in. I go to do the medical test. I'm not thinking, will they discover something that will disqualify me? How can I be disqualified when God has qualified me? And I say, I will prosper and go through life, go through life, and always understand this is the day the Lord has made, and uh, the Lord will make you prosper in Jesus' name. Now, that means that when you have courage, you're able to cope, able to cope. In what areas do we cope? Because we're looking at courage to cope at crossroads. Those children of Israel, they came to the crossroads. And in their crossroad, a lot of them were not able to cope. They started crying. They started saying, we'll choose a captain that will lead us back to captivity. They couldn't cope at their crossroad. I will cope. I will cope. The Lord has put something in every heart to do and to have ability to what God has called you for. In what areas do you cope? Number one, we cope under peculiar predicament. Peculiar predicament. You have heard of those uh, at least you have, you know, one person born without the limbs, without hands, and without uh, feet, and yet he made it, became a professional, is now married, and is having children. If he can cope, you have two hands, you have two feet, you can cope. You have found people that have tried one thing too many, so many times, Abraham Lincoln, and eventually he could became a president. You can cope. There may be a peculiar predicament that you have. It is like, you know, when I read, I don't understand. That's my peculiarity. It is like, I'm always tired. I'm all, always fed up. I want to do this. I start with a great zeal, a great zeal, and great fortitude. And then the moment I start, I just lose interest. And therefore, that's your peculiarity. In the peculiar predicament, thank God, but courage that the Lord will give you, you will call. I will call. Number two, we cope under peer pressure. Peer pressure. That's something you know, for everyone. It's not just for you know teenagers and for young adults. It's for everyone. Your peers, your classmates. And the people like you, and the people who are not thinking of their lives, they're thinking of your own life. And they think that even though they can't control their own lives, they will control your life. Pressure, pressure, pressure is the pressure to fit in. Is the pressure not to climb up. Is the pressure not to be different. You're going fast, too fast. And you're doing something you know, that others have not done. And then the people that are near, and they have never attempted that, and they put peer pressure on you. The people that were, are able to swim against the tide, what courage, knowing when we get up there, the Lord will not say, I understand. It's your people, the peers that have hindered you from achieving what I called you to achieve. So I excuse you. No, he'll not excuse us. He would say, I told you to be strong and to be very courageous and look at the path I have before you. By the grace of God, we have all had peer pressures. I had peer pressures as I was growing up. But then uh, I went through and I pierced through that kind of peer pressure. And I'm where I am today. That same courage the Lord will give you. Yeah. Number one, peculiar peculiarities and predicament. Number two, peer pressure. Number three, personal perception. Personal perception. You know, we go through lives uh, with perceptions. Those people, they perceived that those Canaanites were like giants. That's their personal perception. They perceived they were grasshoppers. That's their personal perception. They are great. I am small. 
That's your personal perception. They are rich. I don't have anything. You know? That's your personal perception. They are lucky. I am not unlucky. I am not lucky. That is your personal perception. And that is the time you need to cope. That in spite of that, even though that is there, even though that's the way I feel, even though I feel this is what I perceive, yet I can cope. Number four, powerful personalities. There are bullies in life. We don't only have bullies in the school, bullies in college, and bullies, uh, you know, around us. In the street, we have bullies. The people who are very difficult, powerful personalities. And they march through the city and through the town. Anyone they find trying to climb up, they'll bring him down. And you say, how can I go? Courage, courage. When Joshua got to the land, those people at Jericho, they formed the gates, they closed all their doors, and they said they will not come in there. And Joshua went back to God. He said, I've sent you there. All the walls will come down. All the walls that buy you and debar you and stop you from getting in into that place of your inheritance and possession, you will enter. I will enter. And so those powerful personalities, and Joshua said, what will I do? He said, tell the children of Israel, everybody can do what I tell them to do. He didn't tell them to acquire ammunition, to learn how to shoot. He didn't tell them to learn how to do this and do that. What are we going to do? Walk around your Jericho walls once a day. Everybody can do that. Second day, walk around again. And with the understanding, I can go. On the seventh day, walk around seven times and just shout. The walls are still up. Shout. The walls are still standing. Shout. And they did, and the Jericho walls came down flat. I see that all the Jericho walls before you will fall down flat. The things you are thinking, that's impossible. I cannot jump over that. I cannot penetrate that. Just happily, joyfully, triumphantly walk through and walk around and say, Lord, I thank you it is done. Your Jericho walls are down. And then number five is pervasive pollution. Pollution everywhere. Corruption everywhere. In this atmosphere, who can cope? Who can cope with this situation? And then somebody telling himself, it's only when I travel out, when I go to another place where there will be no pressure, where there will be no uh, predicament, where there will be no bullies, where there will be no personal, uh, powerful personalities, where there will be no pollution, no corruption, then I will thrive. There where you are, anywhere the Lord has ordained that you will be, you will thrive in Jesus' name. And then, uh, number six, in the present pandemics. In the present pandemics, and somebody says, systems are not even working. And we're not even allowed to gather together and have this or that. And if there is no way I can walk on my vision, how will that be? The God of heaven, even this during, uh, during this uh, present pandemics, the Lord will make you shine. Yeah. And the Lord will make you overcome. Yeah. And then uh, prophetic performance prophetic performance in the midst of prophecies going up and going down you know at the end of the year this prophet will say this new year is going to be darkness everywhere another person will say we have not seen anything yet that this new year this will happen this will happen and this will happen in this new year if you think that you know you are going to make progress those uh, prophets they say i will don't want to deceive anybody the lord has shown them it's going to be a difficult time and then i remember 
remember Elijah? There was famine in the whole nation. And in that famine, God said, Elijah, he said, here am I, Lord, come. And then he put him at the brook and he drank water out of it. And God sent him a food from nowhere through a raven. The Lord will send you help from nowhere. Power from nowhere. Provision from nowhere. Whatever the prophetic utterances are around you. Or maybe somebody wrote to you. He said, well, I hope you believe this. I never say anything except God showed me. And God said, this will happen. That will happen. This will happen. Gather your house together. Because it's going to be terribly tough this year. Hmm. Prophetic performances. How can cope with that? Ezekiah said, I can cope with that. Isaiah came and said, set your house in order. Because this is Isaiah. I never miss. I see a child is going to be born. A son will be given. And it will be so. I said, a virgin shall conceive. It shall be so. I, that same prophet, I come to you. And I say, you will die. What do you do with that? To cope, you have to have the courage of a loan going to God. And Ezekiah said, God, what am I hearing? I'm not ready to die yet. Are you ready to die? Hey, why don't you tell God I'm not ready to die yet? They prophesy. Why don't you go back to God? I'm not ready for that. You have a dream. Why don't you go back to God? I'm not ready for that yet. He says, God, I don't accept that. He said, you sent him. But I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. I am going to live. Everything the Lord has ordained that I will do, I will do before I go. I like the amen, but you know, that's for me. Everything the Lord has ordained that you will be, that you will do, that you will achieve. You'll do, you'll achieve before you go. The prophetic performance. Those are the people that face life. They don't see darkness. They don't see negativity. They don't see impossibility. All they see is the God in heaven who has called them that they will achieve. And they will achieve. Number one is the courage to cope at crossroads. Point number two. Number two here is the consequence of coping out with cowards. The people that always say, the problem is more than I expected. The challenge is more than I expected. The slope of the hill is so high, that is the height, beyond, above the base, the slope is so high, I don't think I can climb this. And so they check out, they drop out, they cop out. Cowards, cop out. Number one, avoid challenges. Avoid challenges. If there's any challenge in their career, any challenge in their lifestyle, any challenge in their home, any challenge in wherever the Lord has called them, the first thing they, they think about, they cop out, they check out, they drop out, cowards. Number two, they abandon convictions. This was their conviction, and before they get on the field, they said, I can I will, I must, and now they get to the field, and the moment they get there, there are, there are things that challenge their convictions. As if you cannot. Where were you born? In a village? Where did you grow up? In a community that is, you know, moderate. And then we didn't have this, we didn't have that, we didn't have that. And so they abandon their convictions. This week of impact, the Lord has planted conviction in your heart. And with courage, 
you will pursue that conviction. If you find yourself abandoning your convictions, your spiritual conviction, your Christian conviction, your professional conviction, your personal inmate conviction, if you find yourself abandoning that, you're a coward, a cop out. Then, number three, they abase their conscience. They tell them, in this place of work, you know what? We understand honesty. We leave honesty in the dictionary because that's the place it belongs. Over here, if you're going to make it honesty, forget about that. Other people, they forget integrity. They throw off, they throw out, they throw away their integrity because they tell them, over here, integrity does not work. And so, they destroy their conscience, they sear their conscience, and they abase their conscience. Number four, they accept corruption. Everybody, whenever we come out, we say, God, clear corruption away. Clear corruption away. In church, we all rise up and we pray, we shout, Take corruption away from our country. And then these same people that pray, they're cowards. They cannot be the front runner and the forerunner in canceling corruption. And they go to their offices and they go to their communities. They're looking for something. You know, and the people tell them, nothing goes for nothing. If you want that, bring this they don't call it little bribe they say pour water so that you can walk on wet ground and then they compromise they accept corruption i will not accept corruption i will not approve of corruption say it very well i will not affirm corruption these are courageous people. The cowards accept corruption and the cowards acquire more cowardice. They were cowards before they got to that place. Now the challenges and the pressure and what the people are saying, they acquire more cowardice. Number six, they abide in crooked character. Their characters that the Lord wants to build up, clean up, clear up, and make them real examples and shiny stars anywhere He has put them. Because of cowardice and because of the tendency and the habit of copying out, they abide in crooked character and such lives number seven they attract condemnation from the creator they attract condemnation from the creator they are the people that never make it i will not be in their company i said i will not be in their company Hey, look at some like that. Psalm 78, and I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 78. We're reading from verse 9. Look at this. The children of Ephraim being armed, carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They were equipped. They were engaged. They were enlisted. They were fortified. They were prepared, they were trained, but all that, the engagement, the enlistment, the involvement, the skill, the training, the ability, the power, will amount to nothing if you're a cop out. Will amount to nothing if you're a coward. The children of Ephraim being armed, carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. 
Look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, they kept not the covenant of God. They refused to walk in his law. And then in verse 11, it says, they forgot his works. They forgot his wonders that he showed them. Look at verse 41. Here is where cowards are not down. This is why cowards never make it. Yea, they turned back and tempted God, look at this, and limited the Holy One of Israel. They brought God to their level. What I cannot do, God cannot do. What I cannot face, God cannot face. And what can, cannot challenge, God cannot challenge. What I cannot overcome by myself, God cannot overcome. They limited the Holy One of Israel. But now, as we come to the New Testament, we are walking by faith. And if you can only believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Any believer in the house tonight? I said any believer there? You raise up the hand that, you know, even the people who thought you'll not make it, they'll see your hand, they'll say you have come out of that unbelief. You will overcome in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 38, it says now, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back out of cowardice, out of copping out, out of dropping out, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Verse 39, he said, but we are not of them that draw back. I am not of them. I am not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Believe to the saving of the soul. There's initial salvation. There is ongoing salvation. There is the final salvation, and as you keep on believing, the Lord will give you salvation in all ramifications in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three now is our connection with the conqueror for new creation. Our connection, you know, what you need to do is to get connected with power. Heavenly power, unlimited power, unfailing power, is to get connected with power. The power that comes in your life and makes you a conqueror, and turns you a conqueror. It will be so in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 19, and he says unto them, follow me and I will make you. Follow me, I will make you. The Lord wanted to make Peter a fish of men. Follow me. He wants to make you whatever the calling, whatever calling he has given you. All you need to do is connect. Follow me, you follow the Lord. You'll not be a failure. Amen. You'll not be a dropout. Amen. You follow the Lord, enemies will not trample you on their feet. He will make you what you ought to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 18. Being then made free, he'll make you free. Amen. Free to walk, free to move, free to go, Amen. free to succeed, Amen. and free to run the race he has brought before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Being made free from sin. Look at that. That's what destroyed the prospects of Adam and Eve. But now, Christ comes 
And he said, everything that happened negatively to Adam and Eve, it will reverse in your life. It will reverse in my life. It will reverse in my life. And it makes you free. Look up. It says, it makes you free. We didn't ask him to do that. He volunteered to do that. He took the initiative. Well, we didn't even know there's a possibility of freedom. We didn't know there's any possibility of redemption. He said, there's something they call redemption. Is that so? There's something they call freedom. Is that so? There's something they call salvation. Is that so? There's something they call eternal life. Is that so? And I will give it to you. He was the one that took the initiative and he said, this is what I will do for you. He will do it for you. Yeah. Being made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22 there. In verse 22 it says, and but now, but now, forget yesterday, but now, forget last week, but now, forget last year, but now, forget the years of failure and the years of defeat, but now, forget the years of up and down, falling and rising, but now, be made free from sin and become the servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Let's come to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21 verse 7. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 7, it says, He that overcometh shall inherit how many things? All, All things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The Lord will be your God. Amen. Christ will be your Savior. It'll transform your life. It'll change everything that needs to be changed in your life. What happens after that? Come back to verse 5. In verse 5, it tells us, And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new in your life. Behold, I make all things new. This new year. Behold, I make all all things new in the path that is uh, before you in the race you are going to run behold i make all things tell me somebody new. all things new number one you'll have this year a new confession a new confession if you will confess with your mouth the lordship of jesus and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you will be saved. Number two, a new conversion. A new conversion. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. There will be a new conversion. Maybe you said, I was converted before. I hear, but... Did anything change? Your mindset, did that change? Your plan, did that change? Your language, did that change? Your cowardice, did that change? Your character, did that change? There's a new conversion coming to you today. I said there's a new conversion coming to you today. Number three, a new creation. A new creation. If any man, if any woman, if any boy, any girl be in Christ, it's a new creation. Old things are passed away. And behold, tell me, tell me, tell me. I told you to tell me so that you can find out in your own life. As all things have all things passed away and all things become new in my life, my thoughts, my plans, my disposition, my attitude, my inner conviction, as the old passed away, my relationships and my emotion, 
I mean, always getting angry, angry, angry any, any day, every day at little things, at big things. Am I crushed? Am I conquered? If any man be in Christ, it's a new creation, old, new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, tell me, all things have become new. Number four, a new companionship. A new companionship. You know, in the past, your companion was on the negative side. I will do this. And that voice will say, no, don't. You cannot. I'm going to the right, and that companion will say inside you, go to the left. I'm going to read. That one will say, no, go and play. But now you have a new companion. And Jesus is that new companion. He's the one that will pave the way before you and say, let's go and succeed together. Because I overcame, you will overcome. Because I conquered, you will conquer. Because I'm for the top and for the highest, you'll be for the top, for the highest in Jesus' name. He never discourages anything good. He comes to your life and he makes you do what you are created for a new companionship and then a new consecration. A new consecration. Now, everybody seems to have consecration. The man of the world consecrates his energy, his brain, his thoughts, his mind to destructive things. And the one being controlled by Satan, he consecrates energy and everything to what Satan is dictating to him. But now the one who has left sin, has left Satan, has left evil, has left a bad society. The same consecration, he brings everything now to the altar of the Lord and he consecrates to the Lord. He sows the good seed everywhere and the good seed you sow will come up with a lot of good harvest in your life in Jesus' name. A new consecration. Number six, a new courage. You know, before you came to Christ, before you made that connection with the Lord, you, 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 you know, always get fed up, always get tired, always get, you know, when the exam is coming, I think of the exam, I get sick. And when a new, a new opportunity comes, I need to do that. I think of that, I get sick. When it comes to face a crowd or to face your class, you just pass out because there was no courage and the cowardice followed you everywhere. But now a challenge has come. I'm excited about that challenge. A new courage comes into your life in Jesus' name. And now you become, now you become, now you become a new conqueror. A new conqueror. A new conqueror. You know, I know some people before they come to this level, the only thing they conquer, they conquer mosquitoes. If they're reading and then a mosquito flies by, they throw the book away and they're searching. Where is the mosquito? Where is the mosquito? The only thing they covered in it, they conquered in their lives, they conquered mosquitoes. And the things they try to cover, they are as small, as negligible, as insignificant, as almost invisible as mosquitoes. And then later, they conquer flies. And they conquer cockroach. They say, trust me, trust me. Anywhere I see cockroach, I conquer. That's all you conquer. But now, a new conqueror. I said, a new conqueror. Instead of conquering mosquitoes, I conquer mountains. I said, I conquer mountains. Any force, instead of conquering flies, I conquer force, formidable forces that stand before me. I keep on walking. I keep on walking. I keep on walking. Uh, let me explain to you what I mean by that. Jesus went to pray, and his disciples were on the sea. 
and he was walking on the land and he saw the disciples on the sea. What did he do? Did he stand at the shore there crying? The boat is gone. The sheep is gone. No. He was walking on land. And then he kept on walking. He saw the sea in front of him. He kept on walking. And he saw that he was going into the river. He kept on walking. He kept on walking. He had the courage is passing on to us we shall have. That when you are walking and it is solid ground now, but then you come to a place that will sink you into oblivion, then you keep on walking. That's courage. Keep on walking. I said keep on walking. That's what unstoppable people do. They keep on walking. They see difficulty, they keep on walking. They see challenges, they keep on walking. They hear criticism and they keep on walking. They hear people that belittle them and they keep on walking. They see the impossibility of a river before them, they keep on walking. And they see the people that said, you will never cross this shore. You will never cross this line. And they keep on walking. I want to announce to you today that I have thousands, hundreds of thousands of people here, outside, everywhere, that take everything was spoken tonight, and then in their lives, they keep on walking. In your life, you keep on walking. Whatever they say, you keep on walking. Whatever noise is coming from there, you keep on walking. Yeah. You walk to the place of destiny. Yeah. I, I will walk, walk unto, the unto the place of destiny. Of destiny. Connection with the Lord. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to take you from the place of failure. And to the place of success, from the place of a downtrodden coward to a person who is lifted up by divine connection with the Lord. And he says, I make all things new in your life. Let's bow and eyes closed. I don't want to leave anybody behind who are going on a great journey, a journey of accomplishment, a journey of achievement, a journey of a person, of a place that will never be driven back. It's about an eyes closed. And you want to connect with this great companion Christ that will make you a new creation. And everything before you will become new. Wherever you are, raise up your hand over there. Over here in the Alpha location. Over there anywhere. A new life is set before you. A new way is set before you. A new path is set before you. And that habit of copying out. That habit of dropping out. That habit of being always tired to move on. The Lord wants to cancel it now. And you're giving yourself fully, surrendering yourself fully, wholeheartedly unto the Lord. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. God bless you there. As you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Please stand up. Make a date with the Lord. Make this a momentous time with the Lord. That the Lord will see that you're making that connection now with a great conqueror that never lost any battle. Stand up so I can pray with you. Stand up so I can connect you. You can get connected with Christ as Savior, Christ the giver of eternal life, and Christ that sets us free from our past and he brings us into this new life. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. Make this the day, the time. You give yourself unreservedly unto the Lord. Tell him to forgive your past. Tell him you turn away from the past. And you turn to him now with all your heart. 
He has accepted you. He said, whosoever comes to me, I will for no reason cast out. He cannot cast you away. I want eternal life, and that's what he gives to you now. I'm praying, I'm praying with you now, Father, in the name of Jesus, you have said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And all these who have raised up their hands, here, there, on the social media, in the privacy of their homes, anywhere they are now, they've given themselves unto you. Receive, accept them in Jesus' name. Forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. Make new creatures out of everyone now in Jesus' name. As they confess with their mouth that Christ Jesus is their Lord and that was raised up to set them free to grant them eternal life and salvation. As they confess that, make it a reality in their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. The Lord has done it. I said the Lord has done it. Our counselors are there. They'll quickly take all the information they require, and then after that, I come to pray for everyone, new creatures today, everyone in Jesus' name. We're we'll calling on our minister tonight to please help us during this counseling time. This is a moment of connection. This is a moment of connection. If you have given your life to Christ this evening, whether you are hearing us on social media, on TV, or on radio, you can connect with Christ right now using www.dclm.org forward slash connect with Christ. If you are joining us on TV or on radio, you can send a text to plus 234-915-444-9263. If you are joining us on radio and on TV, you can connect with us, send a text if you've given your life to Christ through this phone, phone number, plus 234-915-444-9263. If you are here seated, you want to connect with Christ right now, as the final prayer will come up, you want to start praying for connection. Christ wants to connect you. This is the night you have been waiting for. Counselors, let's check up on those who are standing. Don't live here the same way tonight. Don't live here as someone who only conquers mosquitoes. Live here as somebody who can conquer your mountains. You can get connection through the altar of Christ. This is Mount Zion. This is your night of connection. This is your night of a new confession. This is your night of a new conversion. This is your night to become a new creator. This is your night to get a new companionship with God. This is your night to get a new courage. This is your night to be a conqueror. Connect with Christ this evening. Connect with Christ this evening. Don't go home the same way. Please, our counselors, notify us when we are done. If you are sitting, this is the night of your connection.
And for those of us who have given our lives to Christ, we have dinner with Jesus at the back of the hall. You can join us there as we have a quality time with you. The man of God will be coming soon. The man of God will be coming soon. Would you go home the same way? Amen. Amen. I stand to be a conqueror. I stand to be an overcomer. I stand to be a mountain mover. Every mountain in your life will move in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at that mountain. Look at that sickness. Look at that infirmity. Look at that disease. Whatever the name are. Look at that. Those diseases, sicknesses, you see now, you see them no more in Jesus' name. Amen. Kill has come. Amen. Healing has come. Amen. Deliverance has come. Amen. I will give testimony. I will have a testimony. That problem will stop right now. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Raise up the hand and lay the hand where you have the problem. At the final, amen, everything will vanish away. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Father, we well, thank you. You have said you will not fail us. You have said you will not forsake us. You have said every word that comes out of you will do its work, will not come back to you void. And Lord, I come with that confidence, trust, and faith that everyone tonight, here, there, YouTube, Facebook, all the handles, over the social media, online, Lord, power goes forth to them now in Jesus' name. Mountain of sickness, of infirmity, of incurable disease, move out from there. Lord, search every captive free yes, Lord Jesus has went about doing good healing delivering all that were oppressed of the devil I pray now you go about everywhere touch every life heal the sick yes, deliver the oppressed yes, that demonic thing that troubles harasses that life I command you demon Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, now healing everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Testimony in every mouth. Manifestation of your power. Performance of your promise. Demonstration of who you are, the healer, the deliverer, be it done right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. Check up. The miracle is there. Yeah. 